Hi, it's Kelly. And last week, I talked about how to make a collage layout in your pages using layers. And I very specifically said that all you're going to need are papers from your scrap box. Nothing fancy. And then I moved on pretty quickly. And I was surprised and interested by how many of you said, well, nice stash, but where do I get one? Because I don't have a paper library like this. Today we're going to talk about that. And the good news is you probably have far more paper resources nearby than you realize. All you have to do is teach yourself to look for them and to, to see them. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So join me, won't you? All of the papers that we're going to be looking at throughout this video, whether they be background pieces or focal points, are going to pretty much all come from the same few sources. That's going to be found objects, which we will talk about in a moment, flea markets or car boot sales if you're in the UK, thrift stores, charity shops, library book sales, church rummage sales, and yard sales. Also, talk to your friends because I know almost everyone I know right now is calling and actually looking for a good home to give their stuff to or trade their stuff to. So my point is just ask. First, let's talk about what I use for the underlayer and what I recommend you might try. And that is just some monochromatic pieces, usually text. Now, I'm using old papers, but all you've got to do is go to a yard sale or a, f a thrift store and buy three or four different inexpensive books. And that's going to give you three or four different paper shades, font sizes, and styles so that when you tear them into irregular shapes, it's going to give you contrast, even though it's still just all text. Dictionary pages look really good in the background. And because of the internet, for better or for worse, dictionary pages are kind of redundant. The good news is it means that they are easy and cheap to find again, at all the sources I just mentioned. And again, I would suggest that you ask because I'm willing to bet that you know people that have them in their basement that would love to get rid of them. Sheet music is a nice addition to your static underlayer. Uh, again, thrift stores, yard sales. Uh, I guess I should say that if you are uncomfortable cutting up a perfectly healthy book of sheet music and or any book, I'd like you to consider that the first thing I would do is see if you can find one that has a, a broken cover or, or busted pages, and that way you have permission to take it apart. But otherwise, I have to tell you that a lot of this stuff has been on the shelf for a long time. It is neglected, it's not seen and it's not cared for. When you take it and you take it apart and then add it to an art journal, collage, scrapbook, card, any of your work, you are taking it and you are making it seen. You are making it cared for and loved and giving it another life. So please consider that. Oh, also, it doesn't have to be a book. This is some junk mail that came today. I was going to recycle it, but now I'm just going to tear it into strips because it's got a lot of, lot of different contrasting styles going on there. And there you go with your print. Now I'm going to talk about where to find your focal images, otherwise known as the fun part. We're going to start with magazines. And uh, by the way, magazines, or if you're still a little cherry about cutting up a book, if you need text, you can get them in a magazine 
lots of different text styles and fonts for contrast, and you can start by cutting up a magazine and get used to the idea. Pretty much magazines are everywhere. You just have to teach yourself to look for the images that you want. A friend got rid of a big stack of old New Yorkers and so many powerful images that would look really good in an art journal page. This history magazine was in the free box at my secondhand bookstore. And it was made a lot of interesting reading, but after I read it, I saw all of these images, some colorful medieval things that would really look good either as an abstract collage or cutting them out as focal points driving your narrative. This magazine was free at an airport. Some beautiful people, not my type, but that would make a good story element. So if you ever take the bus or any place that gives out free magazines, my grocery store gives out free foodie magazines to try to get you to shop more and cook more. And those have a lot of pretty images. Uh, I use a lot of birds. This was also in the free box. It's from 2013. So somebody didn't want it anymore. And you could either look in the free box and say, why do I want a magazine that's seven years old? Or you could open it up and see that it is full of treasure. And I am going to be using this, a lot of this, in my upcoming work. You can also think about greeting cards. Now, I bought these after Christmas, well, a few years ago, really, really cheap. And uh, I've used them a lot since then. I think it was like, you know, 75 cents. You can also use greeting cards that you have been, uh, have been sent to you. And especially if you don't want to get rid of them or throw them away, then you can incorporate them into something that's meaningful, like a card or a scrapbook. This was a free uh, brochure in a church I visited. And a lot of powerful images here. Again, I just had to remember not to recycle it when I got home because, and to, to look past that and see the potential. This is some junk mail. Somebody wants us to buy bullion, right? But look at that. That would make a really cool, if you would rough tear that, that would make a nice addition to any journal page. All of these tell a story. And then I noticed these, these coins. Cut those out for embellishment or even to make like a little halo for a small uh, figure. So just imagine. Now we're back to looking at books as a source of images. Just talk you through some of the good stuff that's, that I've used in my collection. This was from a thrift store. Really, it was $3. And I have been using it for many, at least four years. And I haven't even come close to finishing with it. So this was a really good source of stuff. I just had to, to recognize it when I saw it on the shelf. Same thing here. This is from a car boot sale here in Wales. Uh, I find these almost every week. They're usually about a pound. It's a, just a field, kind of a guide to wildflowers. And they're very common here. And I tear these up and use them in a lot of different stuff. Uh, this I have not cut up, but I'm going to. It also, uh, you can see it was 99p, so about the same as $1.40. And inside, it's full of a lot of images that 
really suit uh, my style and, and my themes in my pages. So I will be using these pictures. Teach yourself to look for coffee table books and art books. This one is from the 80s, so it's about 40 years old. I did, don't feel too bad about taking it apart. I am reading it first, but as I read, I am then going to be using it, as I said, to turn into something else beautiful. This actually is a pretty nice book, but it was at a church rummage sale. It was about half an hour before the sale was going to end, and it was still there. It was marked down to like 50 cents. And if I didn't take it, nobody was going to. So I took it. And I am now going to be able to use these in my images. So they will go into my library. You can, of course, print up whatever you're looking for. The internet is a very helpful tool there. These are images that I have printed from a company called The Graphics Fairy. I, I work for the Graphics Fairy. I make videos for them. But before I did, I was also just a big fan because of the extent and array of images that they have that you can print up and use. They have a paid site and they also have a free site. I have linked to both in the text below, so you can find that. I also have a lot of free images on my website. I just uploaded some high resolution Tudor Queens that you can print up and use in your own work. And I've also linked to those. So have a look at that. Finally, I said that I would talk about found objects. And once you start knowing how to look for those, you're really gonna be surprised at what you've got right in your own house. This was from a paper shopping bag, and that would make a nice corner in a page. But look at these guys. These are boxes from some tea. Uh, and I was about to recycle them, and then I thought, yeah, I love this color. I love this. Um, right here, you've got some really fun images that could be cut out for focal points or embellishments. And then you've also got the text, the color that could go into a background collage underlayer. This one is from some bedtime tea. And again, look at that. This is beautiful. It'd be a shame to waste that. So I'm just suggesting that you look around you with fresh eyes and see what you can see that you can add to your work. Now, I hope that this gives you some ideas, some inspiration for going out there and looking for the cheap stuff, the good stuff, and the fun stuff. And then pretty soon, you're gonna have your own paper stash so that whenever you're start ready to start creating, you've got everything on hand that you need. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and I will be posting new art tutorials weekly. I also have an online newsletter and you can subscribe to that below and that goes out every other week. In the meantime, you now know what you need to do and where you need to go to start looking for your paper stash. So why are you sitting here? Get up and go make something.